This is uh, that stuff I was talking about. It's like that Brooke and I do together, um, come up with a concept and do our kind of self-assigned editorials. Some of them are paid editorials. Some of them uh, we just kind of dream up and pitch. I love it. Where is this? That's uh, on an island in South Carolina. Wow. It was, uh, it's a pretty amazing place. Had an amazing model. Of course, Brooke's gowns are unreal. This is an editorial we shot for a magazine, this next one. One of her handmade dresses that's like made out of a hundred year old lace. Wow. So it's, it was kind of just for the shoot. It would probably decompose and I love how you guys would, work together though. Yeah, it's so wonderful. Yeah. Just another one too. and a lot of it, you know, I'll switch back and forth between large format to give a look like that. And then your fashion work smaller. is just beautiful. Beautiful, well, it's beautiful. Fun. I have a good time with it. Great. Have a good time with it. And this is kind of, you know, the large format stuff, that's kind of where I've been for the last four or five years and just kind of stuck on it, shooting everything on paper and that's it. That's what I want to do. That's all I want to do. Very cool. So, so this is new? Yeah, Parker Pretty. Parker Pretty, uh, <laughs> it's kind of a firm that we came up with that, um, um, you know, like I said before, we pitch to editorial jobs and things like that and where she does the styling and I do the shooting and we work so well together. We, we always, we build this ladder with one another that we could never get to the top without each other. It's like, she'll come up with an idea and I'll be like, yes, that's awesome. But what if we did this with that? And she'll uh, say, yeah. yes, that's awesome. But watch this. And then she'll do something. And all of a sudden we're at a place that we could never be before. So that was kind of my first thing with collaboration and collaboration. I used to be so hell bent against it's like I want to do my thing my own thing I don't want anybody's help and now I love to collaborate I, I didn't before and now it's it's a wonderful thing and we all just kind of work well together but choose your team wisely you've you've chosen a really amazing and talented uh, artist yeah. I love what you've done I love how you've mixed her designs and her art and her medium in with yours so when you walk in this space it feels like a studio, an art studio. Yeah, I wanted her stuff to be as prominent as mine. And we kind of designed this together. Um, she has just an amazing design eye. And we kind of played around with it where her stuff's kind of in the front, my stuff's kind of in the front, and it can intermingle. It can be together, because it is together. I mean, what we do is kind of hand in hand. So, this I mean, great. you'll see through the gallery, like her gowns are incorporated into my fashion work anyway. So why not have those gowns on display here? I love it. And then she works right up front here. And Brooke is just, she's unreal. She's wonderful to have in the studio. We elevate each other. Well, at least she elevates me. <laughs> I, I can't speak for her. She probably wants to kill me most I of the time. I believe that. But, yeah. <laughs> Without a doubt. I always love coming into your space because when I come here, I... I leave so inspired, so I always have this giddy feeling knowing I get to go visit Parker and um, just seeing your work. It's, it's, <laughs> sorry, I know I'm It's embarrassing, you. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. It, well, it's always different. I'm always changing things up and just missing, mi mixing stuff around and uh, yeah, it's hard to say what's up here. It's like we have all like a large format wall here where everything's paper. So yeah, we're constantly mixing it up in here, um, changing, changing the gallery up. Uh, like we have one wall here. This is all uh, large format shot eight by 10 camera. Um, right, right. I pretty much only shoot on paper. Um, so let's talk about that a little bit because I know um, a lot of people don't even know what that camera looks like or what that well, is. Well, <laughs> yeah, it, well, I mean, you know, the, the, the camera kind of Ansel Adams-ish looking thing with the bellows and you know, we got one over in the corner there, kind of a display. Um, but it's more the medium, I think, that people don't see because it predates pretty much anything in the photographic world. So, you know, this is, this is early 1800s and it's, it's basically the, the same exact thing. Um, working with very, very slow ISOs um, and you're shooting the negative directly onto a piece of paper. Like wow. you go in the dark room and you used to make enlargements from a negative to the paper. Well, I'm just using that paper to actually capture through the lens. So wow. it, it's kind And got, that's what this is. This is all paper, yeah. So shooting things like fashion with flowing dresses at an ISO of two and you get one shot is a little crazy. So we're talking, you know, 7,600 watt seconds of light, 
there's a lot of stuff happening during these things. And there's a lot of different lights to do things. It's not one of those cameras where you just throw a big light on it and you have beautiful light. Um, it only sees green, so a green spectrum of light, and that's it. Like the wet plates that I shoot, I also shoot wet plate collodion, it only sees infrared light, or ultraviolet light. Infrared, ultraviolet, oh my gosh, <laughs> where am I this morning? It's still early. Um, it only sees UV light, so this only sees green light. So there's no way to really meter for that at all, because there's no right, meter right. that says this, this much UV light. So you have to just kind of know it's practice. A little it's practice, and, error and, practice. On and this is, um, I guess, five years with the paper nigs that I've been trying to perfect and get. Because, it, it, you know, just a straight paper negative, if you were to just shoot it, is extremely contrasty. It's kind of black and white with just a little in between. And I've pulled that dynamic range out through my chemistry and through what I'm doing with the paper now and the way I shoot and light it and the color temperature I'm shooting and lighting, that I'm getting almost film-like dynamic range, which is This is, um, crazy. you know, so much of this conversation, I feel like a lot of people are gonna be like, what <laughs> is he talking about? Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I think one of the things to, to keep in mind is you've done this for how long? For, well, this? Photography. Oh, photography. Um, well, this is my sixth month of doing <laughs> this, so I don't even know. Well, uh, uh, let's see. I. Yeah, a long time. Okay, so a long time. So yeah. you, and you approach this as a craft. You you approach mm. this as an art form. And let's just talk about the different cameras that you use. Let's just kind of let's go from oldest largest to point and shoot. To Yeah, to your <laughs> exactly. To this that carries it. So so what do we start with? We start with what's your biggest camera? What's my biggest camera? You're getting That's personal now. <laughs> All right, well, let's go take a look at her. <laughs> Wow, that's a big camera. <laughs> Is this yeah. your biggest camera? <laughs> that's yeah, that's the biggest this camera. The small right thing now. here. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, yeah, that's. I wanted one a little bit bigger, but it's really hell on the neck when you put the camera strap on. Yeah, right. It really hurts. <laughs> um, yeah, this is a twenty by twenty. Can you imagine? That's the negative. That's the, that's the negative. That's the negative. Yeah. Wow. Or the positive. Wow. Or depending on how I want to shoot it. Yeah. Right. Very cool. Yeah, and this, you, this is, is still working. You use this to create images. Well, it's in process right now. It's in process of being rebuilt. This was made in 1920, and I purchased it from a wonderful photographer here in town that had it in her studio kind of as a prop for years. Wow. And she um, had had it with the United States and is moving to Belize. So she couldn't take it with her. and. Who we, better to leave we, it with we, than we you? We discussed a, <laughs> uh, a fee for it. So this is all being re rebuilt. I'm gonna put uh, all new bellows in it. And the bellows are ginormous on this thing. Um, I already have uh -huh. a lens that covers that. I have to build a back for it. I have to build some film plates, but you know, obviously you can't go to B&H and buy parts for this. Probably not. <laughs> so uh, everything's made by hand. Everything is, it, it's a craft itself. I mean, look at the, it's just so sexy, the way everything, the dovetail, the way everything's made on this is just amazing. And it's just slick. It just, that's focus. It that's just, focus. That's, that's focus. focus. Yeah, that's how wow. you focus. Wow, so that's it's, beautiful. So uh, it's gonna be amazing when we get done with it. Oh, but, I can't uh, wait to see what you make with this. Yes. Tell me about this camera over here. Well, that's kind of the, the workhorse. This is my Betty, my honey. What I love is that you call this your workhorse. <laughs> this is my workhorse right here. This, I shoot uh, like the new website, parkerjfister.com. 90% of the website is shot on this camera. Wow. Um, it's eight by 10 Deerdorf. Uh, on the front of it is a Voigtlander that is 1904 or so with a shutter, which is kind of nice. Uh, most of those are barrel lenses. So um, I, this is kind of the setup. I don't have a plethora of lenses. Well, I do. Right, right. But I tend to only use one. Right. I just stick with this for the most part. And you know, what's what's interesting is you come in here, uh, you know, I, and the first time I actually came to your studio, I thought, well, gosh, I'm, I'm never going to buy one of these and I'm never going to have one of those. But I love what I got from you and what I, I hope everybody else can can get from you is 
your creativity and your passion and what inspires you and how you think. And, it, and while you have these fun things to make these amazing images, it's also, it's just, it's just a tool. Right, it's just a yeah. way for you to get your expression out. So yeah. it doesn't matter what the tool is. Yeah, this just happens to be your set of tools. Yeah, right. Absolutely. I mean, you know, w whether it's this or an iPhone, everybody's got their tool. There's this guy, Eric Mincher, that does these iPhone photographs. That we're we're friends on Instagram. Yeah. And I am continually just blown away with what this guy gets. Like he's. It doesn't matter what. It is, it right. doesn't matter what the capture unit is. And I can't believe I just said capture because that is my pet peeve word. <laughs> I hate, oh, great capture, Parker. It's like, you don't capture things with this, okay? Hello. <laughs> right. You borrow it and then maybe you steal a little soul with this. Yeah. Um, but he does just these unreal things and it just doesn't right. matter. It can be on whatever. That's and great. It's, it's perfect. So this is a majority of what you're creating with your artwork? Yep. Then what? What's what's your next? What's your next camera? Uh, next camera. Whew, well, we might have to visit the locker. The locker. You know, the last time I was here, you had in the front gallery, you had all these amazing landscapes. They were so beautiful. And now I come in, and you've got this whole different medium, this whole different different feeling going on when you come in. And I love watching the evolution of your work. Um, I just like being in your space. So tell me a little bit about, do you, do you do a lot of work here in the studio? Do you? Yeah, I do a lot of work in the studio. I travel quite a bit. I um, do a lot of personal projects, a lot of personal projects. Right. Um, so it constantly evolves. It, you know, landscape I've shot forever. I mean, it just, it, that's just part of who I am. But I think it's also part of everything else that I do. Like I can incorporate all of that, whether it be a wedding, like they're grand, a lot of my wedding stuff are these grand landscapes with someone in it. And you're like, oh my, oh, oh. And that's their wedding portrait, you know? And right. that's what my clients are looking for. I'm only putting out work, honestly, that I like. I love that. It's stingy that. and I get called out for it sometimes, but it's true, and I'm not gonna lie. It's like, I do it for me. I do what makes me happy. And if those clients come to me, I only do 10 weddings a year. Right. I only do 10 to 15 portraits a year, and that's it. And maybe a commercial job or two. And that's it, that supports me. I've put a price on my stuff that that supports me for the year. But you're drawing Allows the right to clientele. Do, well, yeah, yeah, because I'm drawing the clientele that loves what I do, Right. period. They don't ask me to do anything else other than just be Parker, right. you're turned loose. So what you're so saying makes is me happy. you don't get a shot list? <laughs> <laughs> Very <laughs> seldom. Okay, I get thrown for a loop every once in a while and handed, and I, it depends on the day what I do with that shot list, but I'm always pleasant about it, especially if it's on wedding day and they surprise me. I don't but the point waves, is, is that they don't really hire you no, for that. That's no, not what they, they do. Don't. They're just like, we can't wait to see what you do because I make them one promise. The one promise is not to do what they've already seen on my walls. Oh, so I want to make cool. something yeah. original. And that's the only thing I promise them. Not like 2000 images. Right. I don't promise them that. Right. You promise so. them one. <laughs> I promise really one great really great one, image. and and yeah, I, wow. I you know I deliver a few more than that, but not much. A couple. Yeah. <laughs> and I you know I think what makes you so unique and so different is that this is your passion. Photography is your passion. You happen to make money doing it. Yes. But this is your passion. In and yeah, well, it supports like all that stuff supports my personal projects, which I think of as my future. Like that's where I'm headed. That's where I want to start. It's like um, museums, art galleries, books. That's kind of the direction I'm headed with all that stuff. So I'm just making it for me right now and slowly been leaking a few things out over the last, I don't know, year, I guess, but not much, not everything. I keep all the good stuff back. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it is my, passion another keyword these days and I have to have it or that's who I am right I love that. I love that yeah. that's why you're so inspiring to me um, so talk a little bit about your space I know that you do a ton of stuff out on location you do a lot of stuff outdoors um, well like the, the stuff on the wall here is from a series called natural grace and it's all about being born from the earth and it's being about raw it's about um, 
It's about one's connection to the earth. It's about no barriers. It's about freedom. It's about whatever you want it to be about. I make it for me. I have an idea. I know what it means to me, but it's more important to the viewer because these are all stories that I write. Like photography isn't anything unless you have an idea. Like this doesn't matter. Medium doesn't matter unless you have an idea. If you don't have an idea, light doesn't even matter. It just doesn't. So that's always the first step for me is kind of coming up with the concept, the idea, or at least the feeling that I want to evoke from the image. So that's kind of where I start and then I build from there and like the last 5% of the whole process is this thing or right. this thing or whatever you're using. That's such a different perspective than I think a lot of photographers take, right? Because they get into the business, they love photography, they love creating and then they get the into the business skier. and then they forget to develop the craft and to really t push, push, push that um, because they're so busy running a business, right? Yeah. So you kind of flip that around. You, you do what you love, you create these amazing images that people desire, and your business flows from that, right? Yeah, well, my business is clear at the tail end of the quarter percent of down here. It's like, I don't know, to be a photographer, you have to, well, for me to be a photographer, maybe this is a personal thing, that business has to be just, business just has to come. I'm not a marketing person, I'm not a big salesperson. It just comes and I work on the ideas as a person, not as a business owner. So I'm always creating these ideas that I wanna push people into the uncomfortable and make them see past what it really is. Like I did this whole series of constraints where nude people are tied and bound. And at first, when I first kind of leaked a few of those out, people are like, oh my God, I can't believe you do that kind of stuff. That's weird, it's so crazy. It's like, oh, you saw Fifty Shades of Grey. And it's like, no, I, that movie isn't even <laughs> out yet. And no, I have not seen it. Um, I don't even think the book was out at that point. But anyway, it, it, it's like, that's the way it first started until I started explaining. It's like, no, that's people's lives. They're all tied up. And if you notice in any of the constraint stuff, there's always a way out. You'll see a hand on the outside of the room or mm -hmm. she's holding a knife or an ax. People don't notice that stuff until they see it and they realize, wow, that's kind of my life. I've been bound my whole life, but I've always had a way out. And putting that in people's heads and all of a sudden, I've got mothers of the brides now paying me for portrait shoots to tie them up naked. <laughs> because that is the way, and I'm not kidding. I'm totally not kidding that they see themselves as being that way. Maybe they're right. going through a divorce. Maybe they've, they've lived their whole life for someone else and never for themselves. Right. And that's what they see in this work. Photography can still change the world. It can still can change people's lives. And when they see that, they see themselves in it. And that's all, that's why I want to make it. And what's fascinating is how story can change their perception of something drastically. Absolutely. It's a drastic change. It's Absolutely. not even, it's not even mild. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It kind of unlocks something within them that maybe will carry on to something else. Who knows what that can bring on down the road for them. Just having that little bit of an open door. Yeah. Yeah. It's how important art is in our world. And I love that you're it sharing is. your craft with us. It is. And prints, like everybody sees prints on the wall and it's like my clients, they want prints. They don't, you know, in this world of, you know, everything's instantaneous. And we're going to talk more on that this afternoon because my special little Right, treat right. this afternoon we're awesome. going to talk about that so. and just value i mean the value of when when you walk in and you see this this large and and what that feels like yes I mean, that's it's not yeah. a commodity it's not quick it's not easy no it's there's thought and there's passion and there's everything is is into that one image yeah right so, and that's what you're sharing with yeah. your clients i yeah, love it yeah. i love it i love it it's gonna be a good day so tell me about this space this, <laughs> this just looks like where you hang out it, it kind of <laughs> is it, it's it we <laughs> Yeah, I kind of built it to be kind of the hangout spot, which it kind of is a little bit, um, but it's also a little area that I can shoot in too. It's like another vignette that I can play around in here with, you know, the walnut walls and all the- Antique weird, fans. Antique fans, weird stuff on the walls. <laughs> right. um, yeah, that's some of the constraint stuff I was talking bird cage. about earlier. Yeah, bird cages. <laughs> yeah, it's just a little bit of everything, a crazy head. Right. With flowers growing out of it. <laughs> um, yeah, that's kind of this space. Uh, this is left over from one of the shows that I did, which was really, really cool. Like this whole room, I blacked out. So 
when I built this studio, I put sliding walls. So all these walls like slide shut, oh, right? Nice. Or slide open. Um, so it was slid all the way to about here. And there was a black curtain, black plastic was on the top and this room was completely blacked out and turned into a dark room. Oh, wow. So we had 500, a little over 500 people come through the gallery the opening night. And when they come, you know, there was, uh, I think, 84 new pieces that, and it's the first time I showed mm -hmm. all this new work. And when I showed this, I wanted to show it here, not on the internet. I wanted them to see the prints. Absolutely. So they went through little different things. There was a little bit of landscape. There was a lot of portraits. There was, you know, inside here was the natural grace that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. And then this dark curtain with a bucket full of flashlights, these little LED flashlights. And there wasn't a sign that come on in, there wasn't anything. You had to be curious to know that this room was all the fine art nude room. So I wanted to give the experience with people like peeping in and being like, and there was one black light that I put up there. And so all the white paper was glowing. So you could oh, tell there was prints wow. all the way around, but you couldn't see what it was. So everybody grabbed a flashlight and came in. And all of a oh, sudden there was cool. like, hundred people in this room and they were all like <laughs> peeping toms. They were all voyeurs. And the only way they could see a print was a personal experience for them. You know, they held this little flashlight, everybody had their own and they returned it to the bucket when they left. Problem was my cool little hangout spot and it, everybody stayed and there wasn't enough flashlight. So, but everybody walked around and they got to see all these little pieces and have their own personal connection with them. And that's wow. what I wanted. So it was, And I love that it, it forced focus, right? It yeah. forced them to look at one thing yes. instead of all of the peripheral stuff yeah. we take in constantly. I love that you and gave them And the flashlight them an was a really tight beam too. Yeah. So like it wouldn't even cover a large print. Right, right. So they literally had to study it. And you could like, oh, I just sat wow. and watched everybody and they looked at certain parts and you could see what part of the photograph they were gravitated towards. Right. And it was, it was really cool to watch. It was That's an experiment that was kind of a, a yeah, an art piece in yeah, itself. Yeah, and you gave them an experience. Yeah, it was cool. It was fun. So that's, um, this is the room that has the psych wall on the other side. Um, so I can shoot more kind of, you know, fashion stuff back here. Mm -hmm. I put in the white floor and then I've got just this white seamless that goes on and on and on. This is great. So in here. Hey Parker, what, what's this? Oh, um, those, I, <laughs> I kind of <laughs> sketch everything that I do and want to do. Okay. So I have my little, you know, it's not like some beautiful journal cause I can't draw it so well. But, <laughs> That's why you're a photographer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My pen doesn't work so well. So I have little sticky pads and I have like stacks of these things that most of the work that you see in the studio, you will find a sticky that matches it. Not exactly, but it's meant to be the same thing. The so some of oh, these are great. done, some of these aren't. But uh, yeah, I have no idea. They're just always here. <laughs> They're stuck around. It's hard to say what you'll see around this place. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, so this is the production area. This is where the magic happens. Wow. Or the <clears throat> craziness. It's a total disaster at this point. Um, it doesn't look like much of a disaster. It looks like a working, uh, a working space. Yeah, yeah, it's a working space. You know, this is pretty predictable. Digital is super predictable. Paper is completely unpredictable. You have no idea where it's gonna go. I'm wow. hand making all my chemicals. I'm doing all this stuff to the paper that could in fact just leave it nothing. Right. Um, I even do this one thing, it's called the sacrifice print. So every shoot I do, I do a sacrifice print. And the sacrifice print gets processed in the developer. It gets rinsed, but never fixed. And it's just thrown. Either on the floor, wherever it lands, face down, face up, it's just laid there until the next morning. And I usually do this at night. And the next morning I come in and I scan it, which will leave it pretty much black by that point because overnight things are gonna start happening and I have no idea what's gonna to happen to it. Right. So the whole series of my sacrifice prints are amazing because they're, they're happy accidents. They're things that I can't plan. It's like happy I accidents. can't come up with. Oh, I love it. And that is where the magic is. That's what I love. And it's just like, holy crap. Even there, there's this one that 
didn't work out so well. So I ended up ripping it in half and just throwing it in the garbage can. And it's one of our hair designers, Z. Right. And it was probably two months later that I was taking the trash out. <laughs> That's how crazy it gets in my dark room. <laughs> two months. I don't eat in there, so there's no like food stuff. Right. Um, there's, I, I, I was emptying it out and I saw this print that was ripped in half and stuck face to face with one another, almost covering it. Right. And I'm just like, oh, that's Z. And so I carefully kind of ripped it apart and I got most of it off and I'm just like, why did I throw this away? And what had happened, it just sat there and kind of oxidized, you know, it, it had kind of worked together with one another. And so I taped it back together and made a positive out of it. That's one of my favorite images. And it's like, it was in the freaking trash, you know? Oh, and I, I, love it. I taped it together and it's, yeah, it's kind of wild and crazy. And it's amazing you can get those happy accidents when you play as much as you do. Yeah, I play a lot. So the locker stores like all kinds of goodies. I have, uh, I guess the next step down is my speed graphic four by five that I shoot quite a bit. We'll probably shoot this a little bit today. We'll shoot Polaroids on this. Oh, fun. Um, so that's kind of fun with, a whole bunch of lenses, like Aero Ektars, which are cool. Um, <laughs> this big boy. Wow. Don't get too close, it is radioactive. Completely and totally. I cannot travel with this lens. Okay, why? Because <laughs> it's really radioactive. It's made of thorium, the glass. So this is made for World War II, and it was in the belly of bombers, and they used to do reconnaissance oh, photography okay. at night dropped flares so they needed super fast on large format so this was meant to shoot four by five or i think um, they had the fairchild camera uh, was a little bit larger than that even uh, for this particular model so it's a 300 millimeter 307 millimeter f 2.5 which mounts on my 8x10 it's not meant for that so a 300 millimeter 2.5 on an 8x10 gives you a depth of field of about a quarter inch, if that. Oh, wow. I mean, it's there's hardly anything. So this is the American version, and then the Germans, of course, had their version of the same thing, and of course I have both. Um, this goes on my four x five, I've adapted it. This is actually a close-up helicoil for Pentax 6.7 that I- I, I think you just spoke German. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's uh, what that sounded like. So extension <laughs> tubes, right? You know, extension <laughs> tubes to do macro photography. That's basically what I've grafted on here with, okay. with, with gaffer's tape. So instead of having sets of tubes, Pentax made this amazing thing. That's the thing, like old stuff is kind of cooler than today. Yeah. Nobody has this now and this is a helical. So instead of carrying a set of three tubes, you just dial in, you want it that far away or that far away, and that's your macro. But for me, it works to focus for here because my, I don't want to go too deep. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. You know, the thing that's most inspiring about just listening to you talk and show us your, your um, all of your gear and just seeing your studio, it's not, again, it's not like somebody's gonna go out and buy any of this or do any of, of what you're doing, but just your whole process and the way your, your mind works and why you do what you do. It's, again, as you said, it's your air, right? Yeah. And, and so it's just fun to see what your toys are, um, but it's more fun to figure out how you think and to listen to what inspires you and to listen to your playfulness and, and your happy accidents and to hear your yeah. stories because those are the things that, that inspire me the most. Well, these are just, you know, they're just the pins that we write the story with. But if we don't have the ideas, we don't have the story, like again, none of this matters. So I just come up with stories that needs a certain pin and all these have their place. Like I used to think there was one camera that would do everything. That was kind of my, like, I just want that system because it's gonna, it's gonna do everything for me. That doesn't exist. For right. me, anyway, it doesn't yeah. exist. All the stuff that I do, I can't have one camera. And you've they been doing this for so long that you've been able to collect your yes. tools. Yeah, you for know, sure. They're like you your paintbrushes. Yeah, your... I can't afford to just go out and do this. Of course, a lot of this is old junky gear anyway, you know? It's like people <laughs> give it away. They're like, I don't even know what this is for. It's because they don't know the value of it. They don't yeah. know what to do with it. And yeah. then you do these, these works of art that are so remarkable because yeah. you, you, you know what to do with it. And I even get gifted things from other photographers. A very good friend of mine, Kelly, 
gave me this camera for my birthday. And it's one of hers. She's an old film photographer and she had two. And she doesn't shoot them very much anymore. And she's like, every great film photographer should have a Hasselblad. And so, it's my Hasselblad. And it's pretty. I love her for it. Okay, so, this is the really dark room. Really dark. The really dark room. This is the way we normally have to process film with no lights on whatsoever, completely sealed. And by shooting paper, we can do all the processing under a red light, which is awesome. So now this is our regular dark room that we can work in <laughs> and we can actually see. Which makes it pretty cool, huh? This is huh? awesome. This is awesome. Yeah, yeah, it is a complete and total mess. All the the stuff everywhere, the black that you see is silver nitrate. So that's from the wet plate process. So don't lick it. No, very okay. poison. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, there's good. potassium cyanide over there, which you don't want to mess with. Um, we got nitrocellulose, ether. So we have that process, but what we're dealing with today is like paper negatives. So these are the eight by 10 holders which um, we're just gonna load our film into. And we get, for each one, we get one shot per side. So we get two shots for these. Uh, a typical, like, pretty hardcore photo shoot, I'll make 18 frames. And that's So you take 18, 18, you create 18 yeah. images. Yeah, for most of, the, most of the stuff I shoot, three to four shots and that's it. Like, wow. literally. So let me ask you this, how long does it take you to set up one shot? Well, it depends. Uh, I, I, I'm pretty quick, but I'm also pretty picky. So if we go with like a really large light bank of maybe eight or nine lights, it's mm -hmm. going to take a little bit longer to kind of dial that in because it's not like digital that you shoot, you look at it and you're like, oh, that needs to come up a little bit. It's right. all done with this thing called a light meter and you have to know exactly where the light's hitting and how much intensity that's giving. Right. So it all has to be perfect and the model or subject cannot move literally a half an inch they cannot move a half an inch so during the whole process they have to be still now i've got strobes that go off during the exposure that's going to keep them there i guess we can talk about this later too we can we like can when we're doing it absolutely yeah i'm just fascinated by the, by the fact that you have an entire you will spend an entire day on a shoot and create 18 images yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it makes the back end really feel good. Did I say that? Okay, here we go. So we're flashing some paper here. I'm making the paper a little more excited to light. So I'm bumping up um, the white tone to a little bit of a gray, which is gonna help out with the exposure and give me a little bit more latitude with like I talked about before, this being really, really contrasty, this is gonna knock that down a little bit and give me a little bit more dynamic range. I just know my distance, everything's at a constant. So I've got a timer putting out light to a seven watt bulb through a, a hole that I have in the bottom of this thing that puts out an exact amount of light every time. And it's at a certain distance away from the paper. So as long as you come up with a formula you know, it's, uh, that's kind of your standard that you work with. And then you bounce off of that um, with your chemical base of what you want it to look like. And most of the post is done right here. I guess you call it post. Is dark room work post? I don't know. Uh, we do here in the dark room instead of on the computer. So right now I'll just go through and I'm gonna just keep flashing um, what we're gonna use today. We have several shoots we're gonna do, so I'm just gonna kinda get ahead of the game and do some of these up to be ready. Let's see where that gets us. All right, so now I've got everything all flashed up. Now I'm gonna start loading the film holders. And these just kinda of slip in here. So that's my one exposure. One plate ready. 
kind of a little different than changing a card. A little slower process, or even changing a roll of film. But it is uh, pretty magical to have a negative that is that big. The amount of detail that you get out of this, and just really the look that comes from this is something you can't replicate. It only comes from this and can be made by this. You know, when I shoot these as paper negatives, they come out blacks or white, whites or black. So it is a true negative, it's flipped. So in order to get it back to a positive the way we see, then a couple things can happen. I can do it here in the dark room, which I do quite often, where literally paper is stacked. So there's gonna be one unexposed piece of paper underneath the exposed piece of paper. This is after it is dried. It's put into a case, vacuum locked down, and shot light through the paper for an extended period of time. Because, you know, it's not like a negative where it's very thin and, um, and uh, transparent. So we're talking about something that's very, very, very uh, heavily opaque. So the light takes a little bit longer to get through, but you can make positives that way. And that's the way I do a lot of my stuff in here. Or you can take it to a scanner and you can scan it, or you can just photograph it. That's another way of doing it. Um, I tend to do the darkroom thing and then scan it, um, or just scan it uh, straight away, depending on my, kind of what I'm looking for. Because what happens when you do it in the darkroom is it leaves yourself open to those happy accidents I was talking about. Things that you can't, uh, let's see, I'm gonna use this action, or this preset, or wonder what happens when I do this. It's more, it is what it is. And I think coming to that point in photography is where it's at for me, is it is what it is. It's not about, you know, the fancy stuff that you put on it. You know, a lot of this stuff I just shoot on a white background. I process a certain way and there's no way to change it. It is what it is. And that's what I love, and it, it makes you elevate your game, too, because there's no cheating involved. And that's that. So we're loaded, ready, and now I'm completely blind.